Dr. Mughal here. Uh, welcome to another tutorial. In this one, we are going to create an up counter, which is going to count starting from zero to nine. And once it does that, it's going to flash an LED. Let's look at the functional block diagram. We basically going to have two module. One would be for the seven segment display. The other one is going to be the counter in which we're going to have different sub modules, uh, the counter, the four bit counter, and the clock to slow down to at a frequency of one hertz. Uh, let's start with the project. Uh, let's create a new project here. Now that the project has been created, we are now going to create a new source file, which are we going to name as display. Seven segment. We are now going to add our inputs and outputs. And if you look at the block diagram, we basically have four inputs, which we are going to name as digit and seven outputs, which are basically the seven segments of the LCD screen that we have on the board. Here is the skeleton source file for the one that we just created. As I write the code, I'm going to comment each line in the code so you can better understand. So these are the four bit value to be displayed as zero to nine. And these are the seven segments on the uh, seven segment display. Also, please notice we are going to declare this variable seven segment as register but just for the sake of your understanding i'm not going to add or declare that variable as a register as of now and see if this would work or not we are going to create a set of constraints for the seven segments basically using the command parameter to declare the binary values for each uh, digit that could be displayed on the uh, LED 7 segment. Uh, remember here the leftmost bit is actually the segment A and the rightmost bit is for the segment on the display. We'll do this coding for the rest of the other combinations starting from 0 and all the way to 9. We are now going to use the case keyword or case statement in order to define the values for the seven segments. And again, like I mentioned before, we have to declare the seven segment as a register, which we haven't done yet. But I was just wanted to uh, show you that if we don't do that and when we compile our code, it's going to return an error. And because this counter goes from zero to nine, so we will basically have nine cases.
By default, we are going to choose the seven segment to display zero. So this is done for the display part. Let's see if we have any errors or not. We have four critical warnings, so let's try to troubleshoot those. Looks like I am missing a semicolon on line number 47. And also missing a semicolon on line number 54. Let's save it and run synthesis on this file. See, I was telling you, it is going to return us an error if we don't declare the seven segment as register because we want to store the values for each segment on the display. There you go. Awesome. We're not going to worry about the implementation part, but let's now move on to creating a new source file, which we are going to name as counter. It is also going to serve as a top module for this project. Let's look at your schematic again, the functional block diagram. You basically have two inputs. One is going to the reset. The other one is going to be the clock, which is 100 megahertz. Uh, we need to remember, we need to cut it down to one hertz. We also have uh, two outputs. One would be the six segment and four enablers for the seven segment in order to enable them. So let's declare them as, as an array. We are also going to have an LED as an output. Once every 10 seconds have occurred, the LED is going to flash. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to comment out each line in the code so you can better understand. The clock FPGA is basically the 100 megahertz FPGA clock. This is a reset button. If pressed, it's going to start the counter back again from zero. These are the seven segments and the four enablers for the segments on the LED seven segment display. Uh, also LED being used for as a flasher when 10 seconds have occurred. I'm going to use the parameter uh, in variable name uh, max count because we, are ha we have to cut down the frequency from 100 megahertz to one hertz. Therefore, we are going to use a counter which is going to count 100 million uh, times. So we're looking at 0 to 99,999,999. Nine, 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 so that, uh, the simplest way I could write it down is 100 million minus 1. We also have a counter enable as a wire, which is going to enable the counter every one second. And also, uh, we are going to declare this counter underscore 10m as a register because we are recounting up to that value so we need a higher number so 26 to, uh, 0 to 26 with 27 bits would let let us have that big number and then of course the counter to count from 0 to 9. in this project we are only going to use one of the displays so let's use the right mode uh, board uh, and because it's an active low so we have to make sure the right most bit is set to zero and the other ones being off. Let's now first instantiate the display module that we just created. Remember here the counter underscore 10 signal is going to be our input uh, and each it changes every one second so it will start from zero and go to nine and seg segment signal is connected to the seven segment display So input which is counter underscore 10. Comma output which is segment. And I'm using a variable name SEG for that so I need to change it to SEG.
let's now create a slow clock. This is something that we have done in the past, but we would actually create a different source file and then call the function. Uh, here we are going to integrate everything into one source file. So creating a counter to divide the 100 megahertz frequency clock to one hertz. We always start with saying always at positive edge clock FPGA, which is the 100 megahertz clock and the positive edge reset. If the reset button is pressed, you want your counter to be set to zero. Else, if the counter reaches the maximum value, which is 100 million, in our case, we would want the system to restart every 50 million clock cycles because one complete cycle contains the on and off. So if you divide 100 million by two, you have 50 million cycles. And if the clock is not set to zero, uh, then the, uh, increase the counter by one. Now let's move on to creating a counter to count from zero to nine at a frequency of one hertz. So again, we start off by using the always add command. Uh, when the positive edge of the clock arrives, if the reset button is pressed, the counter is set to zero. Else, if the counter enable is high, which is for the clock, Every one second the clock arrives uh, and the counter is equals to nine. This is when it needs to restart or re in, in other words, reset. So the count goes to zero here. And if it's if that not that's not the case, then we would want the count to go up by one. Now, finally, we would flash an LED every 10 seconds because that would mean one cycle of the counter has occurred. So we're just going to say assign LED equals to and when the counter reaches a value of 9. Let's end the module. Go ahead and save your file and uh, see if there are any errors or not. There are a few errors, looks like. Line number 49. I think I believe I'm missing one zero on line number 49. It should be 100 M, 100 megahertz. I really encourage you as you make those changes, keep on saving and synthesizing your file. I think I have the same issue on line number 51 as well. I'm missing one zero here as well. And on line number 57 as well. Let's go ahead and save it and compile it. Fill again. Looks like there's one more error I have on line number 57. I believe this should be counter, so I was missing ER. One more thing uh, I forgot to add here was the counter enable. Remember, we would want the counter to go up by one every one second. So Creating a signal that is activate that is active every hundred thousand every hundred million click uh, clocks. So we say assign counter uh, underscore hundred m equals to zero. This is when it resets. This is when it has reached its maximum value, which was hundred million. I think the code is pretty much done now. I'm going to create a constant file now. What all we need is a clock first up we also before we move forward we need to make sure uh, the name of the clock ma matches exactly with the way we have written in the code we need seven segments uh, also LED actually, uh, which flashes every 10 seconds. The 
the seven segment and the four enabler. We're not going to use the decimal point, so let's just put hash next to it. We also need one push button for the reset. And that's pretty much it. We will go ahead and save this file and run the implementation now. Make sure you change the name to reset. Hopefully there are no errors. Awesome, it went through we are now going to program and debug. So let's start off with creating a bitstream file. Now that we have a bitstream file created, we are going to open the target. Make sure your basis three board is connected to the computer. Program the device. And enjoy the implementation of your circuit diagram on your basis three board. Thank you for watching. Uh, it was a very, very simple tutorial, uh, but there was a, a lot of stuff to learn. I hope you enjoyed this one and keep on watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and I shall see you guys in another video. Thank you for watching. Bye. <music>